Hi, and welcome to Daily Victory with Pastor Gary. I'm Pastor Laurie Idahosa, and I'm excited to be with you today. I'm serving as the lead pastor here at Victory, and God has been speaking to us so much this month. This month is just being filled with the wisdom and the power and the grace of God. And I'm excited to be on this journey with you in Daily Victory. I'm excited about what God is speaking to you. I'm excited about the vision. I'm excited about our obedience to the vision and our obedience to the call. And I'm excited to see the results Results that we're going to see this year. You know, the scripture is very clear with us where it says we know them by their fruits. And I believe that by the end of 2024, we are going to have so much spiritual fruit that people are going to be undeniably saying, ah, that's somebody that's a part of victory or that's somebody who is a part of daily victory because our fruit is going to be undeniable in Jesus name. All right, let's go before the Lord in prayer. And I'm going to share some things with us from the scriptures. Father, I thank you and I praise you for my brother and my sister today. Father, I thank you that we've come into your presence for this season, for this time, that we are running with the vision that you have called for us to run with, that Lord God, today is a day of increase, of multiplication, of wisdom, of strength, and of power. Father, I thank you that you said in your word that you'll perfect those things which concern us. I want to pray for you right now that those worries, the anxieties, the weights, the pressure, the concern, I just speak right now that it is far from you in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us to cast our cares onto the Lord because he cares for us. And I want you right now just to release your care, release the anxiety, release the worry, release the fear of the future right now in the name of Jesus. You know, the enemy is trying so hard to get us with fear. You know, many people lose their opportunity to really be who God called them in life because they're held back by fear. They're held back by the fear of what people are going to say, the fear of what if I don't succeed. And let me tell you, the scripture is very clear that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but he's given you the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. And so when fear comes in, fear of, oh, what if I what if I, you know, start this new profession and I don't succeed? What if I move into this new environment and I'm not accepted? What if this happens? What if that happens? What if my health fails? What if, you know, and there's so many what ifs. When those what ifs, the negative what ifs are speaking into your mind, that's the enemy trying to control your mind and stop you from doing what God has called you to do. So right now, I just want you to release that fear, that fear, that anxiety, that worry, that concern, that thing that's making you feel like you're going to be held back in one way or another. I want you just right now to release that in the name of Jesus. Father, I just pray for my brother and my sister right now that every fear, every worry, every anxiety, right now we take authority over it by the power of the name and of the blood of Jesus and we speak it to loose its hold off of their lives in Jesus' name. We just speak right now that the peace of God that passes all understanding, that it would guard and be a garrison around about our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. You know, right now there's some of you that are saying, my fear is justified because look at my situation. Let me tell you, there is no situation where fear is justified. Fear does not come from God. So if you're experiencing a fear and you're feeling like it's justified because the situation is dictating that you should be afraid, that's the enemy, not just trying to control you with fear, but also trying to control your mind. And the scripture tells us very clearly, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And I want to encourage you that every unwholesome, every unhealthy thought, you've got to remove it from your mind. You've got to, you've got to speak to those things that they do not belong in your mind. There is no justifiable fear. Fear does not come from God. And so I believe that as we go into the vision that God is calling us to, as we step into the dream of God, we're stepping in with confidence. We're stepping in with a surety. We're stepping in knowing that everything that God has promised for our life, he's going to manifest it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so let's look at the scripture as we talk about vision, because this is a year that we're running with the vision. And I want us to look at the scripture that all of us are very familiar with, and it's been shared before here on this broadcast this month, but I want us to get it deep into our spirit in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2, where it says, "Write." And then the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain upon tables so that he might run that reads it. And I want to talk just a little bit about that. When God gives you a vision, you have to make it clear to the people whose lives it affects. So let's say you're the head of your household. You're the, the whether you're a single mother that's, that's handling the, your home, a single father that's helping handling your home, whether you're a husband that's the head of your household. It, when you're the head of a household or the head of an environment, you have to communicate clearly with that environment the direction that you're moving. 
So let's take it into very simple terms, okay? All of us live in a home of some sort, whether you're in an apartment, whether you're in a shared, shared housing environment, all of us have a place where we call home, okay? So let's think about that. When you, when you have a home, you have to have a vision for how you wanna keep your home, okay? And that vision has to be demonstrated time and time and time again before the people that are living in that environment with you catch the vision and run with it. So if you want, let's say your vision is that there'll be no shoes all over the floor, okay? We, especially I have, I have three boys. So having shoes all over the floor is just something that happens in my house. They come in, I don't know why one shoe goes all the way over to the left and one shoe goes all the way over to the right. And it's hard the next day when they're getting ready for school, where's my shoes, where's my shoes? Because they've been flying everywhere all over the house. So maybe part of your vision is to have organized shoes, okay? You've got to make it clear. You've got, to, you've got to first put shoes in order so that they see this is what it's supposed to look like. And then you reinforce it over and over and over again. Every time they come in, put your shoes on the shelf. Every time they throw their shoes, please pick up your shoe. In this house, we keep our shoes in one place. And you keep reinforcing and reinforcing and reinforcing until finally their house has a culture of putting their shoes in one place. And the culture does shift. The environment does shift, but you have to be the sustainer and the carrier of that vision. If you say, I want all the shoes to be in one place, and you say it once, and you've got kids like I've got, okay? You say it once, you say, I want all the shoes to be in one place. And then you get upset that the next day the shoes aren't there. The next day they put the shoes someplace else. The next day you're tripping over shoes. And you're getting frustrated because they're not doing what you said. But you have to be the custodian of that vision. And I'm using something very normal and very carnal. It can go into many different, many, many different areas of our life. It can go into our eating habits. It can go into our spiritual growth and our spiritual habits of spending time with God. It can go into our financial responsibility and savings culture. It can go into many different facets and areas of our life. And I'm just using this as a very simple uh, illustration. You have to be the custodian of that vision. You have to write it upon the table so that the people that run by easily read it. So if you've got to put up a big sign on your refrigerator that says, put your shoes away, eventually they'll get it and the vision will be accomplished. And then you can move into the next one. How about do the dishes? <laughs> There's lots of things that we can do on a very practical and simple thing that we can say, okay, this is the vision. This is what we need to do. And we have to be the custodian. And that's what I really wanted to drive home with us today is that if we're expecting people to run with us in the vision that God has called us to, we have to be clear about the direction we are going. You cannot be an effective leader without communicating vision. You cannot be an effective leader without constantly delivering to the people the vision, the picture of what it is that you see for the future of that ministry, of that home, of the finances, or whatever the case may be. And then you have to do certain things to line yourself up with that vision because vision is something that creates guardrails. Vision creates limitations. Vision creates an environment where you say, because we are doing this, we can't do this. Because we are saving money for a big family vacation in August, that means that we're not going to eat Chick-fil-A today. Um, you know, there's things that you can't do that you have, to, you have to put aside because you know where you are going. Your vision also constrains you. In fact, the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18, it says, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. So when you don't have a vision, you can do anything. You, you feel like eating something and you're hungry and it's like, oh, well, this meal's $30. It doesn't matter. I'm hungry and I made the money, so I'm going to use it. When meanwhile, you had a plan for your money. You had a plan for how you were going to spend your money this year, how much you were going to save, how much you were going to invest, how much you were going to put into your 401k, all these different things. And your vision is meant to control your, your spending, it's meant to control your actions. It's meant to control your behavior. Where there is no vision, again, I'll read it for us in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. So if you find yourself casting off restraint in certain areas of your life, maybe you're struggling with sin in one area or another. It could be because you don't have a vision for your life in that area. You could be somebody that's, that's struggling with with sin in the area of, of alcoholism, for, let's say that, okay, or, or some type of substance abuse where you're, you're constantly putting substances into your body that aren't, that aren't healthy for you. 
your vision could be that this year I want to have a clean liver. This year, I want to reduce the size of my liver. This year, I want to I live a healthier life. I want my mind to be more clear. I want to think more clearly. So because your vision is for, for health and wholeness and your vision is for mental clarity, it means you have to restrain yourself from certain things. And so that's the way that we improve in life is we have to have a vision. And your vision gives you constraints. So I want you to think right now about the areas in your life that you're a bit reckless with. And we all have them. Maybe you're reckless with your time on social media. You just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. Or maybe it's video games. Maybe it's uh, whatever it could be. I Think about the areas of your life that you're reckless in. Maybe, maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's your eating habits, your health, your uh whatever. You're, you're not careful with your marriage. Uh, you're not intentionally spending time with your spouse. You're not communicating intentionally. You're allowing your, your marriage communication to become reckless. You're not, uh, I'm just, you know, there's so many different things and I can't, I can't illustrate all of them. But think about the area of your life where you're reckless and then go back and say, and I know no, none of us want to call ourselves reckless. I understand that. That's not something I don't want to say like, oh, Laura, you're reckless in this particular area. But we know ourselves and we know where we need to rein it in, okay? So think about the areas where you know you need to rein it in and then get a vision for that area. Get a plan. Um, if it's a weight loss plan, okay, that's a very easy one for us to look at. Maybe you're at a certain weight and you're saying, I need to you know, lose 20 pounds or 30 pounds. And many people make those declarations at the beginning of the year. You know, I'm going to lose X amount of weight. Well, when you have the vision, you might say that. And the reason why those visions don't come to pass is because there's not a plan in action to run with that vision. So just writing down, I want to lose 20 pounds. I think I've written that down every single year. Uh, but when we just write it down and we don't put the action plan with it, then we find ourselves in the same place the next year. And I can tell you, I've had year after year after year that those 20 pounds are still sitting on my vision list, okay? Nothing happened with those 20 pounds. They are still with me and they're still on my vision list. Why? Because I didn't put action to them. The vision is meant to constrain us. The vision is meant to restrain us and to put us in alignment with what it is that we're supposed to do or we want to do or we're dreaming to do or we're hoping to do. So look for those areas where you, where you need some discipline and then take those areas and apply vision to them. Begin to say, okay, I need, I need discipline in my marriage. I'm not, I'm not being kind to my, my spouse anymore. I need vision with my children. We're not, we're not connecting. They're, I feel like I'm talking to a brick wall and I want to be able to connect and communicate and share love with my children. I, I want to have vision in my finance. I, I want to be able to, to have money at the end of the year, not year at the end of my money. Um, I need to, to get some of these things under control. And when you apply vision to them and you say these visions are going to be directed, you'll find that you're going to be successful in running with the vision. All right. So we've talked about several important things today, and I know that God is going to help us apply them in Jesus name. Now, one of the things that is really important for us to, to connect with and have vision with is with our giving. Now, every year, our family comes up with a giving goal. And we say that in 2024, we are going to give X amount of thousands of dollars, or we're going to give this or this to the, to the ministry. And when we have a giving goal, it helps us to every time we have an opportunity to give, we're sowing, we're sowing into the kingdom, but we're also sowing into our goal. We're sowing into that thing of saying, okay, this year we're going to give $5,000. This year we're going to give whatever the amount is. And so every time I write out my offering, every time I do something on, uh, on the church's uh, uh, donate on my phone, on the app, I'm, I'm adding to the vision that God has given me for our finances. So I want to encourage you to have a giving goal. And as you're giving, I want you to give specifically and with an intention that as you give, God's going to give back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So giving, it doesn't leave your hand and it doesn't leave your life. It just, it leaves your hand, but it doesn't leave your life. It's still multiplying for you after you give. So I encourage you to give today. You can donate on our website, victoryexperience.com, or you can text the word donate to 302-324-5400. Uh, I also want you to join us after this broadcast. We're going to keep having a conversation. We talked about a lot of uh, things that might have uh, hit a sore spot today. 
And so I want us to go back. I want us to talk about them and talk about them with people of like faith. And that's right here on our broadcast phone call, which is in the U.S. You can call us on 302-561-6767. That's 302-561-6767. Or if you're calling from Canada, call us on 709-500-6767. That's 709 709- 500 6767. We want you to call us and we want to be able to, to share more with you about the topic we're talking on. Also, we encourage you, maybe you saw this broadcast on your Facebook as a replay. We want you to share it on your page, share it to your friends, share it to your family members, because this is the season and the time that we are not just growing alone, but we're encouraging people to grow together with us. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. Father, I just speak a blessing over your children. I thank you, Lord God, that they are blessed in the city. They are blessed in the field and everything they put their hand to will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us and we will see you soon. Hi, I'm Pastor Laurie Itahosa. It's great to see you today and I'm excited to tell you about what's happening on January 20th. I want you to get out your calendar, get out your phone, wherever you save important dates and I want you to put down January 20th. On January 20th, I'm going to be leading the New Beginnings Breakfast this year. And I need you to come support me, okay? My dad has done this for the last 40 years. It has always been Pastor Gary Whetstone's New Beginnings Breakfast. And he's entrusting me to lead the New Beginnings Breakfast. I'm kind of excited about it because for me, that's a big sign of trust coming from our founding pastor. And not just that, but God has put a word in my spirit that I believe is going to transform your life. This is our year that we're running with the vision. And we're going to be talking very clearly and specifically about how to run with the vision in different areas of your life. We're going to be taking some very detailed time and and working our understanding of vision, working our understanding of dreams and of goals and of direction and of focus. And I'm excited about sharing this season with you because I believe that January 20th is going to change your life. I believe that January 20th is going to set you on a trajectory where you are not going to fail in the things that God has called you to do. So listen up. We're going to be there January 20th, 8 o'clock starts our breakfast, and then 9 o'clock starts the meeting proper. Now, we're probably going to start praise and worship sometime around 845. So come on out at 8 o'clock, fellowship with us, have some free food. But then by 9 o'clock, we're going to get deep into the word of God, and it is going to be life transforming. So be with us. Be with me on January 20th. And I encourage you that this year's New Beginnings Breakfast is for you. It's for your children. It's for your teenagers. It's for your family. It's going to be relatable. It's going to be understandable. And it's going to be something where you can easily implement what we're teaching into your daily life. So we'll see you on January 20th. Mark that in your calendar, eight o'clock, and I will see you there. God bless you. I love you.